Okay, so let's review uh, data frames again. So uh, one way to create a data frame is to use a statement like this. Now we've been using read table, but you can also use this. Okay, so here you would uh, create your data frame by first uh, uh, having columns of data, in other words, having vectors of data, and then you would include them in the arguments like that, and then you can assign it to a name. And then you can give names to the columns using the names function. So you would do uh, names open bracket close uh, sorry open bracket my data closed bracket and then assign uh, names to each of the columns that you uh, included in this line here. So here's an example. Uh, we have a we're creating the vectors that we're going to uh, put into the data frame. So here's one, and that's in the patient ID vector. Then we have an age vector. You notice that these two both have uh, four elements. Diabetes, we have four elements. Status, uh, and so on. Uh, well, and that's all. Then uh, we use, we're going to create a, a data frame like this using the data frame function and we're going to include these columns in it and uh, now we get this so uh, each column so although the columns can have different modes so in other words uh, this is of mode uh, uh, well actually I should say that this is a factor and this is also a factor. Okay, and this is that uh, these are num numeric. So each column must have only one mode. So this column has to, these all have to be of the same mode. These all have to be of the same mode. These all have to be of the same mode. But uh, these the columns don't have be have to be of the same mode though. Um, so next, uh, how do we identify the elements of a data frame? We've seen how to identify elements of arrays, matrices, and vectors. So how about a data frame? So one thing we can do is this. Remember, this is a vector, and it, so that means there are no commas in it. And so it's one, two, and that will give you the first two columns. Okay, or you can use this one which is also a vector. So we're putting a vector inside the square brackets again. And here we're putting the column names there, and that will also give you uh, two columns, those two columns. So you'll get diabetes and status. And then uh, we've used this already as well. So you can do this. You can uh, get, uh, you can use the dollar sign with the uh, uh, data frame name and the name of the uh, column or variable. We I don't think we we might have mentioned this function once once before. I'm not sure, but anyway, here uh, we here's an, an example of a function called table, and it uh, it's a very useful function. You can put two inputs in, so two variables one here and one here, two columns, and then it will uh, count here how many, for example, this is, uh, well, across the top we have excellent, improved, and poor, which is uh, uh, the status variable, which is here. So this goes across the top, and this goes across down the side, type 1 and type 2. And this means that within our data set, it will count how many were uh, of this and, uh, well, I should say, uh, of this uh, type of diabetes and of this status, and so on. Of this status and of this type of diabetes would be here. So it tabulates them, and we use the function called table. So that can be useful. But, it, but anyway, this is just an example of using the dollar sign. And if you, I think we mentioned this before, but uh, you can, uh, if you get tired of 
having to type this all the time at the beginning of every variable name. So there's some shortcuts. You can use attach, detach, and with. So let's just quickly take a look at that. So here we have a, a data frame and one of the variable names. And we do plot, uh, mpg, and another variable name, and so on, and another variable name. You could also do it this way, though. Uh, you say attach empty cars, and then you don't have to write empty cars anymore. So then you can do this. Without the empty cars, you can do this, 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 without the empty cars. And then at the end, you detach it so that uh, it's not uh, assuming that you're referring to empty cars anymore. So he says the attach function add, uh, adds the data frame to, to the R search path. When a variable name is encountered, like this, or like this, or like this, data frames in the search path are checked in order to locate the variable. Using the empty cards uh, data frame from chapter 1 as an example, you could use the following code to obtain summary statistics for the uh, for automobile mileage as long as we had attached the uh, empty cars da uh, data, um, data set, if we had d attached it, then um, we could just plot this, just like we said. But now the problem is that WT weight has many uh, elements in it, because this is a uh, big data set, that is empty cars is a big data set, and so each column has a lot of elements in it, or a lot of rows in it, but this one, MPG, only has three elements in it. So uh, if we try and plot one versus the other, the length of MPG, the number of elements in MPG, is definitely not equal to the number of elements in WT, so it, it doesn't know what to do. Remember I, we said that plot has to have the same number of elements here as in here, so that's not the case. So he says, here we already have an object named MPG in our environment when the empty cars data frame is attached. So we've already created MPG. In such cases, the original object takes precedence, which isn't what you want. The plot statement fails because MPG has three elements, but uh, this one, uh, DSP, I think that's wrong. That's a typo. He didn't mean DSP, he meant w, WT. Uh, has 32 elements. The attach and detach functions are best used when you're analyzing a single data frame 
and you're unlikely to have multiple objects with the same name. Okay, so just want to be aware of this problem. Uh, in any case, be vigilant for warnings that say objects are being masked. Okay? Okay, so he also tells us about the with function. So in that case, I'm going to do something similar. We could do this with empty cars. So we're using this with function. And then, so you, you mentioned uh, uh, a data frame that, you're, that you want to refer to. And then whatever you want to do, you put here, and then you won't, ha again, you don't have to do uh, empty cars all the time. So with empty cars, and then you put the, this kind of bracket, and end with this kind of bracket, and then the end of the with statement. And again, you can uh, avoid having to type in empty cars. So in this case, the statements within the brackets are evaluated with reference to the empty cars data frame, because you put empty cars here. You don't have to worry about name conflicts here, which we had that problem before. If there's only one statement, for example, this, the brackets are optional. So if there's only one statement in here, you don't actually have to write the brackets. Uh, so the brackets are really when you want to have multiple statements, uh, like three statements. If you just had summary, you actually could leave out this bracket up here and this bracket down here. But he says, you know, of course, if you, uh, the limitation of the with function is that assignments will uh, only exist within the function bracket. So, you know, this will be applied inside the function brackets, but then later on, if you, so I can refer to stats here, and that's just, uh, well, that's this. So I assign that to here, but um, now I refer to it outside the with statement. It doesn't know what stats is. So I can define this variable within the with statement, but it doesn't exist anymore once the with statement is finished. By the way, you sh well, okay, let's, let's. He says if you want to avoid this that problem, you could do use this thing as a an, instead of this type of assignment operator. And this will actually allow this to be, to exist outside of the with statement. So you can see that this one, when we just use the regular assignment operator, this it doesn't know about, it gets, gives an error. But this one it does know about, and it doesn't give an error. So he says, if you need to create objects that will exist outside the with construct, Use the special assignment operator, this one, instead of the standard one. It will save the object to the global environment out, outside of the with call. This can be demonstrated. Okay, so we did that. By the way, you might um, run this code and then check to see what kind of object this is. Check its mode and its class. Okay, one more thing he mentions here. So case identifiers are similar to, I think I said before that they're the same thing as, but they're similar to uh, unique key. But anyway, in this case, um, he said, in the patient data example, the patient ID is used to identify the individuals. So, the patient, well, Patient ID is used to identify. This is one patient, another, another, another. So, yeah. He said you can actually set that. He says you can actually set that. can be specified with a row name option. So by row name, we're giving each row a name. In this case, the, uh, we'd give the row names, you know, the like the first row would be called uh, 1, and the second row would be called 2, but that's because patient ID for the first row is 1, and the patient ID for the second row is 2, and so on. So you could uh, specify when you're creating the data frame that you want patient ID to be the uh, um, 
case identifier.